Good morning, folks. We'll take a look at our star. We've got more big quakes in the deep. We'll hit cosmology, astrophysics, and space weather in the journals today as we start with our star and find the last 24 hours was bringing no significant solar flares, just more of the plasma activity at the active regions. We have two on the north there and we'll see that activity a bit better in 304 angstroms, crackling at the smaller incoming group and a jet-like release from the departing group, which was not aimed at Earth. The sunspots departing on the north have really morphed around quite a bit. Over the last several days, we've seen a development in the northern components and a bit of decay in the south, all turning out of view now. We also need to be watching the solar wind later this week because this is no small coronal hole. Right now, solar wind and geomagnetism are quiet, but this dark opening has a chance to change that sometime between Thursday night and Saturday. Two six-pointers overnight, first an aftershock in the Fiji region after their seven-pointers days ago, and then one in southern Japan. Both deep blood echoes, so again, we'll be watching for more. Heading next to the journals where two papers now indicate that James Webb Space Telescope data has already thrown even more kinks into the Lambda Cold Dark Matter model. It's one thing to not find the particles, it's another when the indirect evidence they use to pump the paradigm starts to turn on them. Up next, this is for veteran observers who have done their homework in the playlists or in the books and recall the bit about nova magnetic fields trapping dust. One of the ways we know the nova level isotopes stuck to the dust, dated to the 12,000 year cycle, are from the sun, since they'd take too long to get here from another star and don't escape the nova remnant. The stellar dust trapping is confirmed yet again, even in nominal activity levels of magnetism, aka not a nova, which not only bolsters the extreme scenario dust trapping of a nova, but reminds us that the galactic current sheet traps dust as well. Which is why, as it's engulfing our solar system, we see increased dust in interplanetary space all the way to the sun's upper corona. Last but not least, another excellent reminder that while we are always on the lookout for the major solar blast, it is just as likely that a double CME event, consecutive interacting impacts, are going to cause the next great solar storm. For example, back-to-back long-duration M-class flare CMEs may easily be more impactful than one X-class blast. Now an X-30, no, but two M-5s versus one X-1, yeah, definitely going to be a 50-50 toss up there, a reason to diligently watch our star. We greatly appreciate your support. Watch those playlists in the description box to catch up. Check out the other resources linked in there as well. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.